After a few months, the cycle of having to get up um, in the middle of the night and the j just the adjusted lifestyle of of having to look after a baby really did um, sort of collaborate with um, with sort of issues with my wife and 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 issues about being a dad and um, and there was a time where I got quite sort of depressed. I think. I think the first two weeks was just the constancy of the the whole thing. It was it was just. Um, Yes, you, you get sleep and you do rest, but you never really rest as well. Just to having someone always there and something always needing you is pretty, pretty full on now. You get to a stage where you're going, well, I'm not actually enjoying this. I really, you know, I love my child, I love my wife, but, but I'm not very happy at the moment. Sleep deprivation can contribute to postnatal depression. If you're not enjoying your baby, do what you can to get help before it gets worse. Signs to be aware of are if you find that you, you know, you're overprotective with the baby, just watching the baby all the time, and you don't want anyone else near the baby, or you're withdrawing from the baby, you don't want to be around the baby, or you want other people to look after the baby, you don't think you're able to do the job properly. You're neglecting food, so you're not eating properly. You find you just can't sleep, you can't turn off those thoughts. It's hard to concentrate. Your energy levels are really, really low. You feel really irritable, agitated, frustrated really easily. So just being aware that those signs are saying that you may have become depressed. Every time someone asked how I was doing, I was in tears. And then they'd say, what's wrong? And I didn't have an answer for them. It was just a continual crying for days and days. I made a number of visits to the doctor, to my GP, sort of saying to her, my baby just won't stop crying, you know, is there something wrong? My, my GP would check her out. And in hindsight, I probably should have made, you know, the visit saying, oh, I can't stop crying, and, and got my GP to look at me. For women, it can be very hormonal as well, because there's so many hormonal changes happening in the body. It can also happen for fathers as well. Even though they haven't got the hormonal changes that are happening, their life has changed. This is the biggest change we'll ever have in our life. And if we believe that the changes are more than we can cope with, we can become depressed. I sort of um, took baby steps, like my mum and my best friend just got me to go and sit in the backyard and have lunch in the backyard. So I was actually outside and in the fresh air and looking at trees and, and stuff like that. Um, and then just a, a visit to my GP. A bit of sunshine and a brisk walk once a day can get the endorphins flowing through your body to lift your spirits. Sometimes a GP may refer to a psychologist or a counsellor, or if you know of someone that you know you may want to go and talk to, it's okay. It's not that you can't cope, it's that you're actually noticing, here are some signs, I'm doing something about it, rather than saying, no, I'm supposed to be able to do this. Because no one is supposed to do everything all on their own, and it is hard. And I think being able to recognise for ourselves that this is the hardest job we'll ever do, Therefore, it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to, to get some assistance. And I'm important enough to do that. And that's a great example to give to our children because we're saying, you know, each of us as individuals are important enough to get some assistance.